What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Waterboy Podcast. It is episode number 70, 70, 73, 73, 73. Uh, now, no college football this weekend. Heisman ceremony. Everybody knew it was going to happen. But let's just say it was uh, quite a weekend of the NFL for one of us and not quite a weekend for the other. Uh, I, I'm i kind of happy that today's going to be an NFL pod. Today's an NFL episode, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll start off with college football, I think, though, unless you don't want to. But we'll get over it quickly. What's, what's new in the college football world? Just go over the Heisman real quick. Okay. Yeah. Quick little reaction to the Heisman. So, okay, we'll start off with some college football. So, um, like we kind of expected, Caleb Williams wins the Heisman. Uh, yep. not not a big surprise. We all kind of nope. saw it coming. Uh, my big reaction here is Lincoln Riley right now has now coached three Heisman Trophy winners in six seasons as a college football head coach. That's a pretty solid recruiting pitch, if you ask me. Uh. I'd say yeah. I and and you know uh Baker and Caleb uh, Baker not Caleb Baker and Kyler both went number one Caleb I a lot of people are saying uh a lot of reports are coming out that NFL GMs if Caleb Williams was draft eligible he'd go number one this I year I don't think I don't think that that's far fetched I've seen a lot of comparisons I don't think that's crazy about- to say there I think I think Caleb Williams is the best player in college football people people are comparing him as quarterback to Mahomes. So now I'm not sure if anyone can quite be compared to Mahomes. I don't think that's fair. I, I don't think that's to fair. Anyone but if, to him. if you're getting a, if you're getting, but if you're even, yeah, no, it's Patrick Mahomes, including like draft experts. I don't really know what, I think there's no way that you're I'm not just like blown away with how good he is throwing on the run. He can obviously run too. He has a great arm. Like, he arguably seems better throwing on the run than in a pocket. It seems a little weird, which could be a problem. But like Caleb, I I like I think to myself, if Caleb was on Ohio State, they'd be able to do some dirty things. They'd be able to do some more things on their offense, in my opinion. Well, I mean, they'd be able to run similar to what they did with Justin Fields. Exactly. Uh but then again, then I look back to Justin Fields and the second Fields got hurt once. They literally never ran him again. So I don't know. If but could you fun. imagine if Justin <laughs> Fields was the quarterback on the current Ohio State team? If he was the quarterback in the Ohio State team last year? Well, I mean, it, 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 it'd be, it's fun to think. Like, I, I kind of saw it in 2019. Like, that, like they didn't quite have the receiver core. Eh, actually, yeah, I kind of get what you mean. I I don't like to think about things like that though. That leads me to dark places. So no, I haven't thought about it ever to be, to answer your question. No, I haven't, but solid, solid recruiting pitch for Lincoln Riley. I I'm just, when you just say that 50% of his seasons, he's had a Heisman winner. That's pretty good. That, that's pretty impressive. That, that that's, yeah. pretty, that's a pretty solid start to your coaching career. Uh, but, also, he's like developed those players ground like like they haven't transferred in from somewhere. I guess Kyler Murray kind of did, but he still developed them ground up. Like they but, weren't. But a Kyler man. came in like after a year and then was like yeah, but, with but, Lincoln for a while. Like Lincoln so, was also like, the O coordinator there with Baker before so, he became like, head coach. No quarterback that he's gotten his hands on have already come with a pre-developed skill set and Heisman caliber. Like, yeah, no, no like we could say that. I, I, I thought you were about to say he hasn't had a quarterback that's failed. I was about to be like, eh, well, Spencer Rattler. But, uh, yes. Can recruit Spencer Rattler? Can we confirm that? Uh, 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 hey, hey, that was on Spencer. That, that wasn't Lincoln's fault, okay? That no, was Spencer on Spencer. Spencer Rattler's ass. We saw Caleb, what he did as a freshman. So it's like, no, it, it, that was on Spence. That was on Spence. If you're Spencer Rattler, though, you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself right now. Because no, definitely. I mean, you went out a pretty solid end of the year. But but also, like, you can blame your you losing your job last year to uh, – I just had a Heisman winner behind me. Like No, I mean, you – nobody. I mean, actually, that. yes, he could say that. <laughs> no, he could. Actually, 100%. Put that on your LinkedIn resume, uh, Spencer. Like, the only reason – I got benches because there was a Heisman winner. I mean, Behind me. give me a pass, yeah. guys. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I understand it. 
But uh, that's kind of my reaction. I mean, Do you if have it was anything me, you want to say about Caleb was, winning, Lincoln? If it was if it was me, if I was Spencer, Spencer Rattler, I mean, Caleb Williams isn't. I'm I'm beating Caleb Williams, but. You know, Spencer Rattler isn't built that way, so I, I guess you know. Yeah, no, no, that that is, that is something we could say. Uh, but did you have any other thoughts on Caleb uh, um, before we talk about some of the other guys at the Heisman uh, ceremony? I was I was hoping that he was gonna gonna, you know, make some some forward looks to the Cotton Bowl, maybe maybe give us some some energy to feed off of. Going I'm going to be honest. I thought but... Caleb Williams, he had a prime opportunity throughout the end of the season where instead of putting like F Utah on his nails, um, he should have used his nails for NI, uh, NIL deals NIL and sponsorships. Deals? He was he wasting an be. opportunity right there. When he was up on the Heisman stage, he should have had like Geico or <laughs> uh, like, like, like beats by Dre on his uh, fingernails. I just think that's a, just an easy NIL brand that he just threw away. Um, Caleb Williams. Look, let's let's Caleb, be a little smarter here, man. Let, let's be a little Williams smarter. Should, let's uh, think about the money. Come on, dude. Uh, Caleb, Caleb Williams should sign an NIL deal to represent one of the bigger nail polish companies like in the U.S. Like sign I, NIL, I, I NIL honestly NIL like nail polish. really think like next year, like he'll definitely have Heisman like on his nails, like yeah. for the first game. And no, stuff. he's going to do that. He's going to do that for the Cotton Bowl. It's just, I think he should have, really done like beats or like once again logo, like like, the logos like on gucci there. like on your neck like like dude like nike on your nails Pretty bro average. like come on like let's think here dude come on that's a good clip though you should clip that for uh i mean i i honestly just think like that was an obvious like the first time i saw the nails went viral i'm like oh he's gonna use this for nil and he didn't. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I had not <laughs> thought about that being a possibility. Using Caleb Williams painting. His I mean, nails look at the NIL screen time his companies. nails get now. Like literally, his nails get more screen time than if he put like nil stuff on his turf. Like I thought that'd be another thing. Like if you wear eye tape, why would you not just write like your nil company on it? That's easy marketing. That's like the easiest thing on earth. I know Nike's got those strips with their logos on it. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe Nike's not the best example, but like, I don't know. Like, uh, CJ Stroud had G wagon. If he had G wagon on it, oh my god! Or yeah, like Mercedes. Mercedes yeah, like, like what are we here. doing, guys? What are we doing? Like on your turf tape, why does it not have G wagon on? Why does it not? Like, come well, on. Turf tape's a bit different. Let's think. Let's turf think. Tape's a bit different. Turf tape's also just. So much advertising space. Turf, so much turf, advertising. Turf tape space. though comes from um, like it, it comes from different companies because that's through the training staff. I know, but so many people just write like literally. You can use write I'd on like it. to draw on their turf. That's you what can I'm write saying. On it. That's, like write yeah. on it. I thought you were saying like it comes with like the picture print. No, 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 no. I'm not it's talking like, like a custom Mercedes Benz G wagon print. Custom, no, 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 no. no. I'm saying just pain. write G Y like it's just easy marketing space, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. Caleb Williams, you, you got to do nil deals on your fingernails next season. Like, get me involved. Like, uh, like I'll, I'll get on board no, with literally. this too. Like, I'll, well, I'll take. The you know what? The Water Boys will be your first nil deal. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, we'll set this up. Like, like don't we'll even worry. No, no, we got we, this. We got you covered. Don't worry. Uh, about we it. we know people in the industry. We know names. We know a lot of people. We got connections. You got those connections. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's enough on. Kale. That's all I got on Kale. But okay. one last thing I want to talk about in the Heisman. So I saw a picture of C.J. Stroud's man spread at the Heisman Award Show, and now I just want to say I feel a lot better about our chances of winning the college football playoff. If CJ can replicate that dominant man spread energy that he showed at the Heisman award show. And if he could replicate that energy against Georgia, I feel really good about our chances. I feel really good about our chances in the playoff. So I just want to say, I, I apologize for ever questioning CJ's manhood. Um, yeah, he's an alpha. He's an alpha. I don't really know how to follow that one. I, up. You so okay. I I I want. I just. I'm gonna assume you did not see the picture of him I man did, spreading. I did see the picture of him. Well, spreading. this is my reaction. It's not even like Max Duggan or Caleb like aren't man spreading. They are. CJ's just, he's just out man spreading level. them. It, it was it was absurd. I I just I wish CJ could replicate that same attitude on the field. Is all I'm saying. But 
at, if Ryan Day isn't talking out of his ass and he he is actually meaning what he's saying and he is hinting that Ohio State's going to play loose and just play however they're going to play against Georgia. And if that's the case, that's what we're going to need to have a chance of winning this game. And CJ is pointing things in the right direction based off that man spread. I know people still aren't going to give Ohio State any credit. I think a lot of people still think Ohio State sucks, personally. Yeah, like, that's yeah. What I hear. But I do think that on paper, mm-hmm. I mean, Ohio State's defense is fucking dog shit. But um, Well, I no, can contest they're, that. They're, but they're dog that, shit. Well, they're dog shit. No, they're dog shit. Uh, uh, I think, though, if I'm Georgia, like five, five teams, really bad plays. Yeah. But I mean, Michigan had five shit. rushing yards at the half. What happened in the second half? No, no, no I know. I, I do think, Fair though, ass. okay, it's, so, it's mental so errors, my, it's mental point, mistakes that could be fixed, but I don't think they're going to be fixed. My, my point being is if I'm Georgia, I'm just the, saying, I, if, if I attack Georgia, the Vikings, you, you, I'd give you your time defense. So I was going to defend my. Oh, voice. if you want to attack the Vikings defense, I, I'm, I'm, I'm attacking it right this with you. week. You will, but last <laughs> week you weren't. No, I still would last week. I, anyways, we can go back and watch tape. Always, go on. Um, I don't think we talked about it, but uh, if I'm Georgia and I'm looking at the teams that I could have been playing at the four seed, so let's say between Ohio State, uh, USC, could say Bama, but I'm just going to say Ohio State and USC or TCU. Yeah, I guess like if they could pick a team in that four spot to play. Right. I feel like, I feel like, I mean, if I'm just looking between Ohio State and USC, if I'm Georgia, the only, like, both have not good defenses. And are you going to say you'd, you'd rather play Ohio let me State? Finish. Let me finish. Did you go on. The way you're setting me neither, up here, I'm about to fucking eviscerate you. But go on. Neither. Neither have good defenses, but if you look on like at what the teams are, USC on offense only has Caleb Williams to help carry that team. So if I'm Georgia, I would, I would, have, I would have I let me finish. But go on. If I'm Georgia, I would have much rather have gotten to face USC because one, their defense isn't as good as as Ohio State's. Neither are good, but USC's is definitely worse. And based off of what we've seen. Even with Jordan, I, I don't even with Jordan Addison with with uh Williams, right? Kayla Williams still is the crutch of that team. Ohio State's offense is more interdependent. They have a multiple a multitude of receivers they can go to. CJ Stroud I is not say they have one, but go on. I mean, uh, uh fucking Abuka is he can't catch. I mean, still, I I think that on on paper, just in general, I, if I was Georgia, I would have much rather stacked up against USC. Than no, yeah, a hundred percent. I was just saying, like, I I give my guys crap, but don't compare. Don't even put Ohio State and USC in the same sentence, Everett. It's well, not even. I am. It's not That's even the up state for debate. Of the season. That's the it, state it's of really the not a. Does Ohio State have a Heisman winner this year? Who the fuck cares? I mean, I'm. Just we're, I mean, point. Everett, Everett, who, I mean, come on. What, what are we talking about here? I mean, just making a point. That's not mean, a good what point. Are we talking about? Like, what, like, I mean, what, what do you mean? Who cares? Okay, Everett, if, if we want to talk about USC and Ohio State's defense, okay. At least Ohio State showed for a half. They could absolutely shut down a fucking team. Now, the second half, worst, worst performance of my life. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I want to erase it. I want to erase it from the fucking memory book. I want to erase it. Uh, and remember me after, after the game, how was my reaction to it? I want Ryan day in prison. For- remember how I reacted. Okay. But it's been some time. It, it's been a couple of, couple of weeks. I've had time to think about it. And I just want to say I was a little baby cry, baby bitch. And I overreacted after the Ohio State Michigan game when I was saying uh, per normal. fire Ryan Day, fire yada yada yada. I was being overreactive. I was being a baby bitch. I was. I do think that if Ohio State give us another chance, and I'd just like to see what happens again. Cause I think I don't think they lose like that to Michigan nine times out of ten. I don't think that happens. I don't think that same result happens nine times out of ten. I think. Ohio State, Michigan this year is a little more 50-50 than than I thought immediately after the game. 
I'm I'm confused though. Based on that happening last year and this year, you're saying that I well, I'm looking at it from this. I'm looking at it from this year and Ohio State. The final score looked really, really fucking bad because they made six to seven, maybe eight atrocious, atrocious errors. Like awful, awful fucking awful. Just missed tackles, completely out of position. Just having dudes on the field that aren't in it, like aren't ready to play, shouldn't even be on the field, and you put them in one-on-one positions where they just have no chance of succeeding. Like those things can be fixed. Do I think they're going to be fixed? I'm not 100 sure, Everett. But I'm just saying, I I can see how Ohio State fixes their problems. USC, they need Jesus Christ Himself to come down and fix their fucking run defense ever. There's literally, there is no specific things to fix for USC. Ohio State, at, at least I can point to a couple things where they could actually fix no, it. No, I, I, that's why I USC, said Ohio State. God, State need, God save them. That's how that's they fix said, this shit, both is what de- I'm saying. Both defenses are bad, but USC's is much worse than Ohio but, State. But when Neither you say defense, Ohio State's you, is you God I, awful. No, I'm like, not saying it's, I'm saying... <laughs> No, I'm not. I said they are bad. bad. We were I just said, saying a couple of seconds ago. Yeah, you, I was you, like, "You want to replay that? Say something bad. You're like, they suck. They're bad. Shut yeah, up. Their They're defense bad. is bad. Their defense is bad. They suck. We can both agree that the Ohio State I'm defense saying, this year is not good. It is bad. When I said USC now, defense, now I'm not bad. saying that. I'm I said not, that it is no. Much I don't think we can both agree that. I'm saying Ohio State. They had some bad fucking play, but but it's multitude of. It was like too horrible. Plays in that first half where if we get if we fix those, Ohio State runs away from that game, and I do think they can. They have the potential to do that. They still have the potential to do that. And this goes back to CJ Stroud's man spread. And if the team can play like CJ's man spread, then we have a chance of beating Georgia. Okay, no, I think you do have a chance. All I was saying was that the defense has not been good this year. You look at Penn State, the Penn State game, the Maryland game. You look at the Michigan game. I can probably pull up a multitude of those, but those are the ones that first come to mind where the defense is explicitly sold. I'm gonna I'm gonna contest you more on on on, on all those points. You sound like somebody who eats a lot of that media crow. I mean, considering the only format of I, of you know what, I'll I be honest. I games, like this. Is the thing I, the I have because I for work the past couple of weeks. I've been trying to be pretty. I've been very negative on Ohio State, but I'm a little fed up now. Okay, now, now, fucking my teams. I don't give a fuck about you being dis. No, no, no. Now, now you're disrespecting my team. Okay, and I didn't think it have to come to this. Yeah, fuck it. I'm ready. To- Ohio State's winning the national championship this year. I'm. I am so fucking excited to see. Now, this is this is what I need. It's about time. Now I'm finally on board. Now I feel disrespected. It, it, it's about fucking time. It's been a while. And I needed you to disrespect. Yeah, that was it, Ever. I needed you to jump on Team Ohio State Sucks Cock. Now I can finally be on it. Now you keep the same energy until this bowl game. I swear to God, if you even give Ohio State an ounce of respect over the next three weeks, I'm going to attack you because you hate them. I mean, the only, you just made that the clear. Only thing that, the only Ohio thing State's that going to win the national championship this year. The bad. last time Ohio State was disrespected by the national media like this, people were saying that TCU or Baylor should have made the playoff over them in 2014, which is the most fucking absurd, preposterous statement that has ever been made in the history of sports. What did Ohio State do after those comments were made? Oh, yeah. They fucking eviscerated Alabama. Zeke went 85 yards through the heart of the fucking South and bludgeoned an entire fucking region of the country, ripped their heart out, and proved that they are a bunch of fucking worthless, no-name fucking Southerner rednecks, okay? Afterwards, Ohio State then proceeded to play the Heisman Trophy winner, fucking obliterate his soul, embarrass them on national television in front of the whole world to see. Crop top Zeke put up, I think, eight touchdowns and 800 yards over his last three games of the year and proved why Ohio State's the best fucking team in the country. So that's what happened last time, and it's going to happen again, and I can't wait to fucking see it. If it doesn't happen, well, it is going to happen. I'm not even putting that consideration in my head. I don't even know why I said if. I'm going to say when, uh, and it's going to be great. So the transfer portal, Grayson McCall, 
has entered the transfer portal. Coastal Carolina quarterback, very impressive numbers over his career. Everett, what are your thoughts? Um, you have a lot of opinions on the group of five teams. Grayson McCall's uh, Coastal Carolina is a team that you've been mentioning this year. What are your thoughts on this? I think that he, well, one is going to be, we discussed this before uh, we started recording, uh, and I think we both agreed that he's probably going to be the most sought after quarterback in the portal uh, this year, at least as of right now. I, 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 I actually think that for a second, I was like kind of rechecking myself, but now on second thought, yeah, I, I would I, take I him over think, Hudson Card and TJ and Devin Leary. I honestly do think that I could see him going to Wisconsin with Luke Fickle. Okay, this is also another thing that I, I just want to point out about Wisconsin, Luke Fickle. I'm like a little bit worried about the state of the Big Ten coming up pretty soon here. Like, if Dion went to Nebraska, holy shit, that would have been very scary. Like, that's actually a big thank God <laughs> Dion Sanders is in the Pac-12. Like, oh my God, that could have been bad. Uh, the shit, the steam that he's picking up right now, Dion, is, is unreal. Uh, but I'm not against that. I think Wisconsin, like, Urban Meyer would always say, Wisconsin always has a good running team. The great Wisconsin's team, great Wisconsin teams can also pass. And mm -hmm. I think Luke Fickle, that's kind of his goal here. Get a passing offense, get, get some type of attack in the passing game. And if you can go after Grace McCall, go after him. If you're Luke Fickle, literally anyone, Devin Leary, I don't care. Just anyone's better than Graham Mertz. You, you just need something. Literally, and literally anybody. Our boy Marshall House, uh, I think currently the backup quarterback at Wisconsin. He can even do a better job than Graham Mertz. Just get somebody, okay? And yes, yeah, I, that Marshall I think House. I think yeah. I could also, I don't know what DTR state is for eligibility. I could see him going to There's UCLA. no way he can come back. <laughs> I think... No way. I, I could see Grace McCall going to UCLA. Uh, I could also see him ending up at one of the Florida schools as well. But I, I think I think that the most likely outcome is going to be Wisconsin. I say Grayson McCall hey, is going to Badger, be Wisconsin. She's head for Grayson McCall. That could be interesting. We'll, we'll see how that lands out. Uh, but NFL Everett, that's all on college football, unless you have more. Nope, that was that was it. That was gonna be the last thing that I actually uh, needed or wanted to mention. The only other thing that I did have actually is, uh, how do you feel that Marvin Harrison Jr. did not win the Belinikoff this year? So this is, um, I like didn't really care that much personally, but my immediate reaction was more so how leading up to it, Tennessee fans were complaining how the media hates Tennessee. Why does the media absolutely hate us? Jalen Hyatt's not going to win Belinikoff, even though he is by far the best wide receiver in college football. By far. By far. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we mean by by far the best wide receiver in college football? Slow our roll here, Tennessee fans. Let, let's chill, all right? Because I don't see I don't see Jalen Hyatt making the catches that Marv. I, I mean, also, we, remember when Marv levitated in midair, levitated his body to ensure his right foot got, I mean, I, defying I, I gravity. Don't know, okay? I don't know if you saw this, but it was the night that. Uh, it was more so just Tennessee fans. Stop complaining. No, but right? I, I don't know if you saw this post, but it was from PFF. Uh, it was the night that Marvin Harrison Jr. lost out on the Blitnikoff. It was a post. It was a picture of him in the indoor Ohio State training facility with a jugs machine running routes to catch by himself. Yeah, I know that's what I love like, to see at 9 p.m. If I'm if 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 I'm looking at the CJ Stroud man spread and looking at that <laughs> shit now, I feel stop. Like <laughs> no, you hate my team. Stop it. I mean, I hate your no, defense, no. but no, the offense don't give me game. respect. The offense is fair game. No, but uh, so when I first saw that, I was kind of like. I'm gonna be honest. I, I think Marv is just like always doing that at 9 p.m. I don't I don't think that was like a specific reaction. Like I think he is just always doing that. I think he's just like about that. Uh it's just the thing is I I, I want the rest of the team doing that, Everett. And I don't know if they are. 
Uh, but I said they are. No, they are. Yeah, they, no, are. they are. No, they are. The better whole be. fucking team. Uh, they better they're be. working out right now. Um, so yeah, that's that. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Okay, NFL Everett. Let's start. Let's start with um. Let's start with your game. I don't want to get positive yet about my Chargers. I I want to I want to build that up a little bit before I like actually have something fun to talk about. Uh, but Everett, let's get into um. How would you describe? How would you describe this game? Now, also, I just want to say, y- you have been eerily correct about uh your your predictions. How the Lions always give the Vikings fits, how preseason before the season started, you were like, I'll be honest. One of those lions games, we're probably going to lose. You were saying that preseason. You you yeah, were saying that. Um, I so yeah, thought the lions were going to be the second best team in the NF, uh, in the NFC North. If you remember as well. Uh, I, I do not remember that exact claim off the top of my head, but for the sake of this. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Run it back. yeah, exactly. I did Never. Say that. We, do have, we do have footage of that. What are your thoughts on the uh, the Minnesota Vikings performance? Have you ever heard of a team losing when their quarterback throws for over 400 yards and two touchdowns and their wide receiver drops almost 250 receiving yards? Have you ever heard of a team losing a game when that happens? Yeah, Ohio State versus Michigan last year. In the NFL. No, weak. Um, no, not the quarterback receiver. Yeah, but not the quarterback. No. Yes, yeah, I was so, gonna say uh, Devonte Adams had like two eighty on us week one, but we still won. But yes, Kirk yeah. Cousins threw for four hundred yards, a pass rating of one hundred and twenty six point five, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and was constantly under duress the entire game. And he went eleven and thirteen under pressure. That includes getting hit while throwing. He completed over 75% of his passes, and he is the first quarterback in four years to lose while achieving those numbers. I don't even know what the mark on Justin Jefferson hitting 250 yards and losing is because I feel like that hasn't happened. And if it does, yeah, it hasn't happened. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. So the Vikings, in comparison, let up 464 total yards versus the Lions. Uh, on Sunday, it is the fifth straight time that the Vikings have allowed 400 plus yards, which is the longest streak in NFL history uh, and franchise history. Sorry. And uh, now after those last five games, the Vikings now rank 20, sorry, 32nd in NFL defense. I just, I, I, I don't understand why no adjustments get made. Like, it, it almost seemed like nobody was watching Phil, how bad it was. Well, the, I mean, j got his first touchdown. I mean, honestly, whenever a wide receiver, if it's a first-round wide receiver, is going for their, for their inaugural debut, if it's against the Vikings, hammer that anytime touchdown because it's going to happen. So I just – I don't understand how you get turned around literally on, like, the first – play that this kid has ever had in the nfl how you just get blasted i mean he's he's it's the first he's very fast he's very fast i mean yeah but but you would assume that if you're an NFL no one was player, even in the vicinity of him though <laughs> like, oh no no you, you know what happens uh, on that catch it's like our they corner, just forgot he was on the field no 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 our our, our corner uh one got toasted and then our safety oh, our not. safety who was playing uh wait jamo like dusted him off the line yeah, our safeties were playing wow. we were playing quarters. We were playing quarters. We had three safeties back playing quarters. And our main safety, Bynum, stared down Jamo and then Jamo cut behind him. And then just he just Bynum just decided to go play another another dude. Just completely. I, I heard Jamo only got play. like four snaps in the game though. Yeah, he got that one. And then after that, he, <laughs> he I think they're still I think they're putting him on load management, yeah. to be honest. But just the defenses have been absolutely horrible. And I, I'm now happy that Lewis Seen is coming back, and I'm happy we drafted him because Cam Bynum has put on a horrific display this year. There's been some times where I've thought he's been very good and he's gotten a couple picks, everything. But overall, just placement of himself on the defense for plays, he's let up 
he's just gotten absolutely waxed by wide receivers so many times this season. He's let up so many points. It's just absolutely horrendous. Don't get me started on Daniil Hunter and Zadaria Smith each only having one sack over the last six games. The Vikings didn't get any sacks yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday, or any interception, any turnovers, nothing. Their special teams coverage got torched on a fake punt. Uh, also, the defense, uh, oh, yeah. you know, the defense led up a game ceiling first down on third and long to a left tackle, <laughs> a left tackle, and a swole. Sorry, I guess he, I think he's a right tackle, but who the fuck cares? I, who the just, fuck? It was a lineman. It's just, all right, it defense, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A lineman shouldn't be sealing the fucking game on third and long. It was an eight yard reception. Yeah. Like, I mean, just, what are we doing, guys? I think that, I think that Quake, Quasi, our, our GM this offseason, regardless of what happens, even if we win the Super Bowl, I think that that defense is going to get totally. I, I think love that, is, that you have hope, though. I Holy think it's going to get totally, it. totally restructured. But I, I'm going to be honest. If this defense is this same way, if if Matt Ryan puts up 300 yards on us next week, I don't care if we have the first seed or the second seed or the sixth seed. We're getting waxed the first playoff game that we have. Because even if we put up 50 points on offense, the defense is going to allow 65. So it's just yeah. that bad. And, and, and also on offense, like, one, why are we running the ball constantly when we're getting 0.4 yards per carry? Dalvin Cook at halftime, 14 carries for six yards. <laughs> the, the interior O-line was absolutely horrendous. Kirk was getting hit on every single drop back. Dalvin Cook was getting hit at the line and gain. Also, I understand I like the play call when, when we were, whatever, second and goal, and they were trying to do a jump pass with Dalvin Cook to our tight end. But if the offensive line is imploding the way it has all game versus, by the way, the 28th ranked defense in the NFL, 28th, <laughs> you're getting waxed and put on your ass. Why are we, why are we, why are we calling a jump pass? Like if people are going to surround you like that, like they did that play, Dallin should be on the fucking ground, like just drop on the ground, call to play. I'd rather get points out of it than try to get something and get hit by, I mean, the player doesn't, he, Dalvin doesn't throw the ball. He's never thrown the ball before. So I don't know why we're trying to do like, just get on the ground. Yeah, and I mean, also him I, yeah, fumbling there, the grace. Him, him, him fumbling there, off. him fumbling there. Obviously, the Lions weren't able to capitalize on the points for that because they missed the field goal. But if the, if he hadn't fumbled there, the Vikings score, we have a tie game. We have yeah. a tie game going into into the end of that game, and the Vikings are now marching down with a chance to win the game rather than having to kick an onside kick. And don't even get me started on the fucking refs. Back, back to the rest with you, ever. Uh, well, I mean, well, apparently, the, like I now, said, I, I tweeted, love the refs I, I, I tweeted, in my I game. I tweeted this out. I, tweeted I fucking this out. love I think, the refs. But... I think the refs have a group chat where they <laughs> challenge each other every week to see who can make the worst calls against the Vikings per week. And whoever can get away with it, whoever can get away with the more egregious call wins like a pot at the end of the year. I mean, shit, dude, we, we, we had a ref run into our defender who was playing the ball and gave up a touchdown because the, the ref hit our defender like as if he was playing for the offense uh we also now learned uh, according to this last game um that for a catch to count uh to be spotted apparently even if you have possession of the ball your player needs to be touched by a defender even if even if you're running 50 yards down the field it apparently is not a is not a catch if uh if you don't touch get touched by a defender so i don't know if we're just making shit up on the spot uh, I also guess that uh, you're considered out of bounds when uh, your foot's still on the green grass, uh, even if it doesn't touch the white line. If it's next to it, if it's anywhere near it, uh, it's out of bounds. Learn that one too. Yeah, that was a questionable call uh, for for Justin. Uh, the the refs uh, have been amazing. They've been phenomenal. I know you've had your quite your run-ins with them. Nominal this season. for one person. Uh, it still isn't even you. No, no, no. I, I mean, I was, I was being sarcastic there. They, they, it's, it's, it's very funny at this point. It, they, oh, like, they definitely seem like they're challenging themselves. They're literally just trying to see how far they can take it before they get fired, like before they get, like, in serious trouble. Yeah, uh, at this point, it's, it's almost. Um, almost comical how, how horrible it, it, it is looking, but ever, ever, what are you thinking down the stretch? What, what the Vikings need to do here to like, like how can, can they, 
what can they do Look, to fix I, the D? De- is there something they can do? Uh, do they need Jesus as well, like the USC Trojans on defense? How, how do they, how do they fix their uh, defensive problems? Well, I'll start with the offense, then I'll, I'll work my way there because there's that's the longest list. Um, yeah, it is hilarious seeing Penne Sewell one reception nine yards in the stat sheet. Uh, that also got them in a field goal range, by the way, which sealed the game. Um, yeah, so with the offense. If Kirk is playing the way that he played this last week, if we get to see what just happened again, like if that's the way the offense is operating, at least with Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins, I'm very happy with that. Kirk Cousins put up a 91.5 overall PFF rating, which is his highest mark since 2019. Um, so, and, and having Kirk be able to throw under pressure, I think is, is, is actually something that, that's kind of desperately needed. Justin Jefferson, if he can keep doing that, keep up the pace with that one, he'll break the NFL record for, uh, most receiving yards in the year, but two, obviously they'll put this offense over the top. The big thing now is one, keep utilizing Justin Jefferson, the way that they have they've been playing out of the backfield and, and putting him in the slot and stuff, just working him around. You need to be able to seal off the edges a lot more. Brian O'Neill couldn't fucking do it. He's been asked this year. Darisaw needs to come back because that left tackle spot one or backups now in the IR with a torn MCL Two. They were dog shit. They've been dog shit without him. The interior has been asked. I don't know how it was able to get worse with, out Bradbury there because I nobody thought that Bradbury has been good. It hasn't been good, but nobody thought it could be worse than than what it was, and clearly it it can be. Uh, so he might have worked his way into a contract extension, but but get better, get upfield. Don't get put on your ass at Ingram. Um, use more play action too. You need to utilize play action. And also, Jalen Rieger was not targeted or used once this game. I guess he was targeted on like a hail mary, but that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> special teams coverage needs to be drastically better we've been good punting like ryan wright's done a great job probably the best punter in the nfl but your coverage has gotten fooled multiple times by fakes it shouldn't be happening if it happens at all it should happen one time in the season and that's probably against the worst team that you're going to play because it needs something desperately that's some bullshit what are we doing and then with the defense oh the defense if if i had a choice I let a 12 year old call plays off a of Madden to control are, our defense. Are you like, so, okay. Uh, wow. Over the, over the past couple of weeks, you've given up 30 points, 40 points, 26 points, 22 points, 34 points. Yeah. That's a lot of points. It's a lot of points against. Yeah. It's a lot of points. Also, don't forget like the 50 bomb that was dropped on us. Or was that included? 40 from the Cowboys. Oh, okay. It was 40. I thought it was 50. I, I left. So I didn't remember. I, I kind of blocked that one out. Um, yeah, people forget you were at that one. Yeah. So look, with the defense, one, I don't think I don't think that Kevin O'Connell is going to fire at, at Donatel, at least this late in the season. But I do think that Ed Donatel is now coaching for his job. If I was Kevin O'Connell, Ed Donatel's ass would be in my office last night explaining to me why the fuck I shouldn't fire him on the spot. Uh, and also, if I'm the defense, if I'm the captains, when I'm calling a captain's meeting, and if I'm the defense, I don't give a shit if the <laughs> coaches are there or not. All of our asses is in the film room last night. All of us in the film room watching us get fucking annihilated. And I've been graining that and searing it into everyone's brain so it doesn't <laughs> fucking happen again. But, like, one... NFL coach Everett. Uh, I mean, look, I mean... One, you, one, you one. Great job turning around the Tulane team from last year. You got those boys in the film room. Look what happened this season. One, Jordan Hicks, <laughs> fuck you, put Asamoa in. I want to see Asamoa play more. Jordan Hicks, bum ass, was walking on the play the that to a for prison? Sure, that's fine with me. Jordan Hicks for prison? Well, he, he might not even make the prison team. It's been that <laughs> bad. But, I mean, Jordan Hicks just, was fucking... Just say, just, just put people for prison if you don't like them. Ryan Day for prison, Jordan Hicks for prison. Jordan Hicks was literally fucking walking on the play that Panay Sewell got that nine-yard gain, and also Panay Sewell was his player to cover. Yeah, that's so, not a good luck. So, Asamoa, young player, he wants to be there, clearly... Uh, more than Jordan Hicks wants to be. He's fast, versatile. Where's he from? Actually, uh, Oklahoma. So put him in. He's only gotten a couple reps. He deserves to play more with the way that Jordan Hicks is playing. Uh, two, 
clearly we need to fucking fix the, the safety help. That secondary has been dog shit all year. You need to get more pressure up front in order to, to try and help promote the pass so they don't get as – you need to make the, the offense get that ball out faster. If you're applying more pressure, more blitzes – it doesn't matter if the if the secondary is going to get torched or not because hopefully they won't have the, ball, the time to get the ball down there. You have Daniel yeah. Hunter and Zadarius Smith. That alone should be enough to promote enough pass rush, but you're dropping them back into fucking coverage. Yeah, I saw 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 a couple of clips of like Zadarius dropping back on third down. Like, what the fuck, what the fuck? you doing, bro? <laughs> Like, I, I don't think Khalil Max dropping back in coverage on third no, down. Joey Bosa? I, I don't think so. Is Joey Bosa doing that? Definitely. Well, he's not on the field. But if he was, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be Nick, if he was Nick playing. Nick Bosa doing that? Hell no. He doesn't even know what dropping back is. Micah Parsons? I actually think the Cowboys are stupid enough to do that to him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that's my point. Like, you have those two on the outside. The inside, you have a huge dude in down. Mike is actually really good in coverage, though. But but he should be rushing every time, yes. Like, what the fuck are we doing? We have some of the best players that can promote pass rush on our defensive line and edge rushers, and we're fucking putting them into coverage or we're not blitzing. Like, get pressure however you can. If you're throwing a fucking cornerback blitz in once a drive, I don't give a shit. Ooh, I have a, fun, I have a fun Justin Jefferson's uh, PPR fantasy stat. Justin Jefferson has the second most 30 plus point PPR games through a player's first 46 career games in NFL history behind Lance Allworth. Well, I don't know who the fuck that is. Stallworth or Allworth? Allworth. Lance Allworth. I think he's a Hall of Fame wide receiver. Uh, Yeah, but Justin Jefferson has nine 30 plus point PPR games. Also, just want to note, by the way, um, so the record is... 1,966 receiving yards by Calvin Johnson, I believe, in a season. Um, JJ is at 1,500, and he's got on four pace, games left. He can, he can break it. He needs 125 yards per game to break which that record. Which isn't crazy. Which is not crazy, especially by the way that they've been playing. Also to note, um, he currently has 46 games played with – I believe 4,000, like 500 yards, something like that. He's 132 yards away from breaking, um, I believe, Stefan Diggs' record for receiving yards in Vikings history. Uh, also to know... Really? Mm-hmm. Like Chris Carter isn't even Chris up Carter's there? Chris Carter's number one. Chris Carter's number oh, one. Oh, 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 oh. He's had 100... I think Chris Carter played 128 games, and he had... Like oh, oh, he, Stefan isn't number one on the... Okay. But, but yeah. just think about this. 46 games played. Yeah, that's 4,600 yards in 46 games. Yeah, no, he's averaging 115 yards a game. And, this season. and the record for Vikings history is 128 games, and it's only like 8,000 more. Yeah, if no, that... it, he, he is, he's very good at football. <laughs> well, I don't know if I've ever heard of that. No, we're now debating him, like, literally, like, He's being compared to like Randy Moss in his first three seasons. Like he and he's deserved it, obviously. If so. he keeps pace, though, he might end up being the greatest wide receiver of all time, statistically. That includes Jerry Rice, and I'm stating that right now. I I mean, you all, Randy Randy Moss, Justin Jefferson, ever? We'll 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 see. We'll we we'll, need only time will tell. You know, only time will tell. But yeah, the Vikings give him a fucking percent of the team, please. Get that done. <laughs> Make him, <laughs> Make him a partial owner. Make him a partial owner. Let's get it done. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I... You got it. Time to talk about some bolts. Some bolts. Time to talk about some playoff bolts. Whoa. D- now, Everett, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was saying there's no better no better feeling than seeing your team in the in the hunt graphic uh, yeah. on Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, I was wrong. There is a better feeling. That's seeing your team... In the wild card graphic, past the in the hunt graphic, on December first weekend of December, ever that's way more exciting. Um, I, I saw some numbers saying that the Chargers have like a seventy four percent chance of making the playoffs, Everett. Um, let's just start off with this. Um, anyone with a brain already knew this, but um, it, it's nice to know that after last night, the argument is officially put to rest. Uh. Herbert is head and shoulders ahead of Tua. It's not even up for debate. The fact that Dolphins fans even had even the slightest portion of people 
convinced that Tua might be better. It was was absurd on its own. Uh, Emmanuel Acho, uh, go fuck yourself. Uh, I I hope everybody in the media that even even said to his name in the same sentence as Justin Herbert um, took took a took a nice look in the mirror this morning when they woke uh, woke up and said, "I am an idiot sandwich." Like that one Gordon Ramsay clip. I, I, I hope I, they all I, said that. I do want to say. I do want to. I do want to say. We're not saying that Tua is a terrible. I'm not saying Tua is bad, but it's. But we're to saying say that, that he was Justin better Herbert than Herbert is, is idiotic. Idiotic. If Herbert, if Herbert if, if we're not, no, we're not saying two was bad. But if Herbert I'm not saying was two was bad. Dolphins, <laughs> but if Herbert was on the Dolphins, yeah, I mean, if if Herbert had a receiver that could run a sub four five, <laughs> wow, you could actually <laughs> see him throw deep. It'd be crazy. Like, trust me, when you see Justin Herbert throw deep, like he actually hits the receiver on like Tua. This like, it, it's crazy, club, guys. It's crazy. This could, good, this could be a good clip, by the way. I don't think that Keenan Allen is going to be on the Chargers roster after this season. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with with, with Keenan. It's he's a great safety valve, like safety blanket. Um, I just want Justin Herbert to have someone who, who can like dust some dudes, maybe I torch just, a guy. Like I want some speed out there. Like yes, injury. Mike Williams is great. Mike Williams he's, is phenomenal. Just, Keenan, Keenan is Allen great. Is, Keenan Allen's just always injured and he's getting older and he's got such a big contract on the books. Like it just makes no sense. It's the same way that I'm saying, like, it'd be great to keep him. It's the same way I'm saying, like, it'd be great to keep Dalvin, but it makes no sense. They're both probably going to be gone after this season. It's just not benefiting the team as much. And it's like, I, Herbert has essentially been like keeping this team afloat with everyone hurt all season. Including and- himself. Like actually by himself, his O line's so banged up. He has 0.5 seconds to th- okay. I mean, he also doesn't have like two and a half seconds at max to throw. He also, is it like literally is playing on one less rib? This yeah, year. and like there's no running game. Like he has to pass every play. It's like but anyway, crazy that the Chargers are even in this position. Uh, no. What do you think of this of this of this game versus the Dolphins? So okay, uh, first thing I just want to say, uh, just quick no- look at the numbers. Tua, 10 for 28, 145 yards in the touchdown, and 60 of those yards and that touchdown came off of Michael Davis tripping and falling over. This is what I want to say. This was the most impressive game I've seen by the Chargers defense by far all season, okay? And they did it with no Derwin James, no Bryce Callahan, no Sebastian Joseph Day. Uh, Sebastian, Sebastian, Sebastian Joseph Day. Holy fuck. And obviously, Bose is still out and shit, uh, and uh, like JC Jackson and shit. But I was shocked how good the secondary played. Okay. This was like the first game I really remember the secondary really being physical and pressing at the line of this, uh, at the line of scrimmage all season. They've not really played physical all season to the, to like as far as I can remember. But Michael Davis was just in Tyreek's face the whole game. Like, in his face, jamming him at the line. Tyreek finished the game four catches, 10 targets, okay? 81 yards, and 60 of those yards came off one play, okay? Uh, you, 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 you're you missing one play, though. I know. The, the fumble recovery, I did not count that towards the uh, yard. How, you feel, how do you feel about that play? I, I Now, if we lost the game, my, my opinion would be way fucking different. I'm going to say that for a second from now, ever. I just want to finish this up on Tyreek. Take away Tyreek's 60-yard touchdown catch. He has 21 yards, three catches, nine targets. It's pretty good. From Michael Davis. Do you know who Michael Davis is, Everett? He's your slot corner. No, he's like the fourth string corner who had to fill in. Now he's outside. Bryce Callahan is the slot, but he was out for this game. I don't even know who was playing nickel in the last game. I, I have no idea because literally well, uh, I can tell you this. I want to say I, who Waddle, was playing. I want to say Waddle's their slot. Waddle, yeah, yeah. guess what his stats on the day were, Everett? Two catches. Two catches. Uh I'm pretty sure 33 yards on four targets. I could tell you Waddle uh, who? I, I, I do I do know the Waddle uh, the who? Of, 
I do know the name of the Vikings nickel corner because I watched him get torched by the Lions. Who's Waddle? Who the hell are you? I have no idea who that guy is. He was missing. He wasn't on the field. Have you found me? Yeah, missing, yeah. missing. Bra- missing where person. missing? Jalen Waddle missing in Los Angeles. Where is he? Can't find him. LAPD put out a search warrant. But I've never seen the defense play this good, Everett. And and like the the Dolphins, they were playing catch up. They couldn't they couldn't really run anyway. But it was very ironic. It was like, hey, if you guys just run, like that's how you get yards on our defense. <laughs> but like they didn't do it. So thank you. I think you. we'll also didn't want to like didn't they're starting running back like tears ACL. Oh yeah, Wilson got hurt. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Moser came in, he was sucking. But like Tua was scrambling and picking up yards off. I was like, yeah, like that's how you're gonna get yards off us, which so, is very so, funny. Go so back to this fumble recovery because technically that yeah, was we a run. talk about the fumble. Technically, it was a run. It, yeah, no, like I mean, oh, okay. So this is this is what I want to say about that fumble. Uh, it was just like vintage Chargers luck. Okay, uh, name a more Chargers play than that shit, Everett. Okay, like like that was so Chargers, like. Uh, the, the the Chargers play that's more than that was uh, calling a timeout instead of going for the tie last year. All right, we, we, okay. Now we now we had to get fucking personal. I don't take personal shots like that at the fucking Vikings, but you do. So I'll remember that. My I'll remember at, that. I take my. I'll own remember shots that. Viking. I don't need you to do it because I. Do I'll it remember myself. that, Everett. Uh, but Jesus, man, you have to attack me when I'm fucking down already. But okay, this this, this is my this is my live reaction to the fumble. Okay. I see the ball out, uh, and I want to say it was a Loey Gilman who who was right there, right right in front of Tyreek Hill. And he sees the ball come out. He sees a pile forming, and instead of jumping on the pile, like getting in it, he just like starts like jumping up and down, like celebrating that's a fumble. Um, You, sir, Loey Gilman, even though you made like a phenomenal play, pass breakup on Tyreek earlier in the game, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, bro, you fucking play till the whistle is blown, all right? I was taught that in, like, sixth fucking grade, okay? You you keep going till the whistle is blown. And the motherfucker's, like, celebrating or some shit on the field. It's like, if he just dove into the pile, Tyreek would have been tackled right there. No game. Uh, also, 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 it was Teron Armstead who had the ball in the pile, and he flicked it to Tyreek Hill. Like, he saw Tyreek Hill there, and he... Literally passed it up to him. Oh, I, I did not quite pick up on that part. I, I kind of thought it just like got out of the out of he the pile. And Tyreek was like there. passed the ball, like it was underneath the pile, and their left tackle had had it, and they saw Tyreek. I, I didn't quite see that, but also Armstead played awful. Like like so many people were talking up, like oh Armstead's back. Oh good luck Chargers. You're not gonna get a path rush. Yeah, Morgan Fox was fucking spinning think, his ass. All right, Saints like no, will, we got a pass will. rush. I think Saints fans will say they told you so because they they have all said that Teron Armstead has actually been he's terrible. They yeah, very happy uh, to not Armstead have him. got exposed, so I don't, I don't want to hear any any of that shit. But uh, I I I in terms of just the passing game, Mike Williams six receptions, six targets. Keenan Allen fourteen targets, twelve catches. Herbert was just on fire today. It, it was like. It was the first game. He doesn't even have like his his protection, but it was Mike Williams and Keenan actually healthy together, at, like at full strength, for the first time all year. And it was just beautiful to watch. It was beautiful to watch. But uh, I still have my concerns on the Chargers run game. Like like the, the I mean the, the O line still god awful. Like I'm it was a great lie. win. But my, I mean biggest... I'm not saying we're winning like a playoff game here. My like I want to make concern, the playoffs. My biggest concern with the Chargers is not whether or not they make the playoffs or win the playoffs or fixing anything. It's whether or not Brandon Staley might have actually just secured himself oh, more that's, tenure. That's, like, that's the worst part about this. Process. And, and Joe that, that um, would be the worst possible outcome for, for the Chargers' future. So, so yeah, okay. Now, I, I know I, I, I'm about to get to what you want me to say, but I, I'll say this first. I think coming down the stretch, the Chargers should go 3-1. and one. Uh, they should go three and one and finish the season 10 and seven based on their upcoming schedule of Titans, Colts, Rams, Broncos. They should finish 10 and seven. This is the thing though. If they do that, which they should and finish 10 and seven, 
Staley so back next year. Just like which is awful. Awful. Okay. Now let's get to let's get to what I know you want me to say. Okay. If the Chargers get fucking Sean Payton and and we can actually get Herbert with Sean Payton and actually do Herbert right. My goodness, my goodness, what what could happen? I this team, it, it's really like this franchise, we cannot let him down. Okay. Justin Herbert is the man. Okay. He is him. All right. He's Himothy. Okay. And we're fucking over him right now. We're fucking him over. And we got no one to blame but ourselves. But Brandon so, Staley. Yeah. And by that, I mean, like, I'm, I'm blaming the GM and the owner. How the fuck the GM's been here since 2013, bro? It's like, dog, get him the fuck out, bro. But re- regardless, <laughs> like, we've just never had the coach. I mean, like, Philip Rivers, we did him dirty. We're about to do Herbert dirty, okay? Uh, someone's got to draw a line in the sand and, and fucking fix something here. Someone's got to do something. And we need to hashtag bring Peyton to LA. Okay. I don't, I don't know how we're going to do it. Like Sean Peyton, uh, according to you, he wants to come here. He wants to, uh, that's what you've been saying. Um, the only thing is as a lifelong chargers fan, um, I know that our GM is like, I don't think Peyton's the guy Staley. I like this. I like him more. There's just something about Staley. I trust more than Peyton. You're forgetting who who I'm working with here, Everett. The the idiots that run the Chargers franchise. You're forgetting what I'm working with here, Everett. Um, so yeah, my biggest fear actually might be finishing ten and seven and making the playoffs. That actually might be the worst case scenario. I honestly, in, in any in any other year, that'd be great. Last year, but awesome. I know we're not winning shit this year, so I really don't fucking care how literally the any playoffs. other year that'd be great. I'm, but if you're- you're literally playing now for this. Has there ever been tanking for a coach before? I want to tank for Sean Payton. <laughs> I want to tank been, for Sean Payton. Ever, has there ever been a situation where a team has tanked for a coach before? And it's like, it, obviously, we don't need to tank to get Sean Payton. Like, we could win the Super Bowl and then still, still get, Sean, get Payton. Sean Payton. But the thing is, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with the GM, but he loves Staley. He loves him. And I don't know why. I don't know why. There's nothing he's fucking done that's lovable. Nothing. Not even fucking cool in his post-game speeches. There's literally nothing likable about him. There's fucking nothing. Damn. He does nothing right. Y'all need to just... Sean Payton, Everett. We're a Sean Payton away from, like, being a threat. It's like here's the, the thing. AFC. I know that I know <laughs> that you guys just got Khalil Mack. Like that your GM has a very good draft record. Like I I know that. I know you guys have gotten big age like free agent signing and stuff. I I think you need to wipe everything. I just don't think he does shit once the season begins. Like I think he believes he only works in the off season and he doesn't he doesn't make moves during the like the problem is Both when our stars get injured, he doesn't do shit to replace them in season. It's like he's on vacation right now. Bro, he replaces know he our guys with practice squatters. Like, what the fuck do you expect to happen? Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I think that in order for your team to move forward, I think both Staley. It's and actually Kern better GM, management. I, I honestly, I don't think, I think that the Chargers can win a Super Bowl, but I do not think that it is possible with the coaching no. staff. They could do it with, Mm-mm. they could do it with it's the not players. possible right now. <laughs> You do it with the players and can't do it with the coaching staff. Well, I mean, with this training staff also, we can't do it because everyone's hurt. That's a, that's a big thing. So. Like, this, is, this will be my comparison. <laughs> now, 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 let's just forget that the fact that I mean, my franchise is cursed. It's fucking cursed. Like, let's I just know. forget about the fact the Vikings defense is 32nd in the NFL right now. But with a new We're training probably staff. probably 31st. With a, with a new training staff. We have the with, worst defenses. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. With a new training staff and with a new coach, with a new GM. And basically the exact same team as last year, the Vikings are now 10 and three when last year they were sub 500 with the same team. You know, ever that's the type of shit that motivates me in the morning. You know, that that's what gets me up. 
that's what gets me up on a Monday. Uh, this is, uh, th- this is, yeah, I, you're giving me a lot of hope here. This is just the last thing I wanted to want to say going over uh, in reaction to that Dolphins Chargers game. Um, these are the top five quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, and Justin Herbert. If you were a GM, if you were a coach, you would drop anyone to have any of those five quarterbacks without question. If you want to build your franchise around five guys, those are the five guys. I, I'll be honest. I was very, I was considering like, um, could I, could I maybe give like Justin Fields a nod at this look? Like, oh, like, would oh, I give? Would oh, I consider oh. like Kyler in here? Like oh. maybe like Jalen Hurts a nod. And you know, there, there's like a bunch of guys on that cusp. Like I'm still not completely out on Trevor Lawrence. Like I know we've been going back and forth on him. I still think T Law's T Law's good. But those are my top five. I, I don't think that's that's up for debate. If you want to build your team you around my top five, five quarterbacks, wide receivers are, in the NFL, those are them. Yeah, Everett, let let let's hear it. These these are fun. Everett, give me your, or you you, you announce it. Top five wide receivers in the NFL: Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs, Amon Ross, St. Brown. Oh, 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 oh shit. <laughs> I thought you were gonna really spice things up and throw like a fucking uh just throw like Chris a, Olave in there. Yeah, I know, like go go young or just really piss people off. Drake London, like <laughs> I think Mon Ra is gonna do enough considering Kyle I just, Pitts. <laughs> I just fucked over AJ Brown. So so oh, yeah fun. well i mean and there's chase no way you were gonna put an eagles player on that if, list if i mean somebody's gonna be like well why the fuck is jamar chase not there? actually everett fuck it um give me give me your power rankings give me your top five teams in the nfl right well, now all right hold on hold on hold on no off the top of that top i gotta see i gotta the remember the teams are in the nfl man just give me a second top five teams this is your shit. I I do my college football rankings. You're giving me your NFL rankings. All right. This is your under the heat for this you one, not gotta, me. You gotta you gotta just give me a second. I gotta just look at the teams that are that are in the NFL. I mean, like if necessary, I can give you time time to think about this. We we can just, just ramble for ramble for a second. But, no, 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 no. But no, this no. is you your new gotta, fucking weekly homework. No, You're I giving me a top rankings. ten NFL ranking every week rankings. now. Okay, here are my power rankings. Five, right? Yeah, give me your top five. Eagles, Bills, Chiefs, 49ers, Cowboys. Top five teams in the NFL. I am impressed with you. I'm impressed. You didn't put your own team in there. That takes that takes a that takes can't, a lot. Can't be can't be a top five team in the NFL if you let up four hundred fucking yards five weeks in a row. So I I, I respect that, but you got a lot of NFC teams in there, Everett. Yeah, I what, think um, uh, has has your uh, um fear among NFC teams changed? Uh, who give me? I I obviously the three teams that you just listed are probably your most feared: Eagles, Niners, and Cowboys. Yes, it, well, it has over the past couple weeks. Debo injury, but McCaffrey joining. Has your opinion on the Cowboys well, changed a little well, bit? What what? Big cock Brock, as uh, the 49ers like to call him, whacks the shit out of the Buccaneers. And the Buccaneers, I, I, I mean, the Niners, bro. They don't. It doesn't matter who's playing. The Bucks. Them. The Bucks aren't good. The, the Bucks aren't good this year, but their defense is still one of the better units in the NFL. If he can do that without Debo for half the game, I don't think it really matters. It, it, Christian McCaffrey is going to be enough. Brandon Ayuk is still a very good wide receiver. They have George Kittle. Their offensive line's great. Like I'm. I think that it really doesn't matter. I really, I really don't. And I, I, Debo will be back for the playoffs. It seems like if it's a high ankle sprain, so I don't. I'm not concerned about it. The Cowboys, on the other hand, it can't be worse than getting um, annihilated, like forty to three, the way we did. So they scare me about the same, if not kind of less now, because I feel like it's not. It just can't be. Can't occur a second time. Yeah, it, it it's tough to do the same thing twice. It can't tough, be. We tough. can lose. We could lose, but we're not going to lose by that. Much <laughs> not <again>. by that. <laughs> like, not by that. Much. I hope it's the we same hope. thing with the Eagles. It's the same thing with the Eagles. Jalen Hurts looked great. He looked great last week when he executed the Giants, right? But 
Vikings lost pretty hard to them. I don't think that if we lose, it's going to be by that amount. I think it's going to be more competitive unless their defense is as dog shit as it is currently. Um, I just think that the Eagles prolifically are the best team. They might have had the easiest schedule to play in, but if you look off uh, records, we're still scored, taking shots though. <laughs> if you look at record points scored, I can't not put them at one. It's not fair. There we go. There we go. They do have that, one of the easiest schedules in the NFL. That was very man schedule in the NFL. Uh, uh, Everett, I, I'm not sure if I asked this. Um, with your upcoming schedule, how do you think the Vikings are going to finish this season? Uh, I'll give this, and then let's wrap the episode yeah. up. Uh, I don't know about anybody else who's listening to this podcast currently, but it is finals week for us, and I have multiple. Well, for you, I'm 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 done with finals week. I, final I week for me. for me. Final weeks for me. So, uh. Look, the Vikings play the Colts, Giants, uh, I think. Hey, you get Colts next yeah. week, then I get them the week after. So we can hit them with a little one-two punch, all right? I hope so. But Bang them up for me, all right? That's what she <laughs> said. All right. Um, hey, you went there, not me, so. It was too easy. Um, that's what she said. But, um, look, if we got if, We got Shaw on that, all right? The we're Vikings. Done, done with them. The Vikings. If the Vikings defense lets Matt Ryan throw for 300 or more yards, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm not going to do anything, but Kevin O'Connell, <laughs> too, so I can't do shit. I can send an angrily worded email to the Vikings headquarters. Um, maybe tweet some angrily worded, strongly worded things targeted at Vikings Twitter. I, I but, just feel like usually when you start like a, if something I'm going to, fu- you know, like, I'm going to have an aneurysm. Yeah. So see, so you were going to do something. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do something would have happened to me. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I missed yeah, that. With yeah. a butt bump, just like you, but, um, yeah, I mean the butt bump if, might be going to my brain defense, right now. It might be infecting if, my thinking. So if the Vikings defense lets Matt Ryan throw for 300 fucking yards on them, I, just the whole thing's gotta go. The whole thing, the whole thing's gotta go. That's, that's on the same level as when Alvin Kamara dropped six touchdowns on her head two years ago. Like that's, this past week was already inexcusable. If that happens, that's even more so. So and also, fun little fact, you guys are playing on Saturday. You guys aren't playing yes, on Sunday. Saturday versus Jeff Saturday. Oh, you get 10 a.m. Saturday ever. That's brutal. <laughs> versus Jeff Saturday, by the way. Guy's name is Jeff Saturday. Playing oh, Saturday shit. on Saturday. Dude, they, they get a, a little, little boost. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a problem. But also, uh, Kirk Cousins. Um, I think that's going to be a time that's, that's going to work well for him. He seems to do better earlier in the day. No, no, definitely. Um, I, I, it's like the least prime time, but I guess it's still prime time because it's happening on still, Saturday. Kind of sucks for, yeah. But look, I, I, I think that I hope that they can pick up a win versus the Colts. Like now, here's the deal. It's a really easy schedule to win out. If you win out, you keep the two seed. That's, it's, yeah. it's as easy as that. Win out and you get the two seed. You control your fate. Don't fuck it up. If the Vikings lose to the Colts like the Giants all right I give a 50 50 on that game the Giants can be very good they can be very bad like we saw last week and I don't know if reality has set in for them or not because I really haven't watched them the Bears also I give a 50 50 on it's in Soldier Field if Justin Fields is back if he's playing if he's 100 percent it could be very bad considering the way the defense is played I think in all four of those games the offense is going to put up a lot of points they're going to do well the problem is now going to be resting on the defense in the way that they pick up the good thing is a lot of those teams are run focused teams the colts the giants and the bears all run focus all run heavy so you can try and play off a bit more because most of those teams don't have wide receivers to play bears and giants don't have wide receiver they don't have true wide receiver ones right now mooney's on ir giants haven't had any wide receivers to throw to this entire year their number one's darius slate yeah so I think that's better for, for the secondary, but if they still get waxed, then, oh, wrap it up. I don't care what fucking seed we are in the playoffs. Everybody, fuck, get them out. Get them out. Because, like, it doesn't matter. You're going to get torched. If you can't beat a third-string wide receiver with your number one corner, with your number one player in your secondary, you have no ability to, to win in a, in a game versus a team that's going to have one of the best wide receivers in the league, one of the best running backs in the league, et cetera. So we'll see. But I, I think that the, the Vikings could go 4-0 on the last stretch. But I, uh, I think that they're going to end up going 3-1. And, and they're going to drop one of those games. But I think they'll go 3-1, and one, ending the season at 13-4. and four. 
Yeah, so you're saying 13 and 4. I'm saying 10 and 7 for my bolts, both finishing the year 3 and 1. We're probably going to be fucking completely incorrect. But that's that's what makes this sport fun, Everett. It's not fun unless you you put Fine. Your somebody on will the say line. that I have low IQ again or that uh I'm a college dropout or a high school dropout or something like that when they probably are working as a window washer. So oh. I'm just saying when, when people are going to come call, call out, uh, call us out on TikTok, being losers, you've never played sport. Why, why don't you put your face yeah, behind the account and stop hiding behind a fucking profile picture it, it, of, it, of the Alabama Crimson Tide uh, team logo? Why don't you show your fucking face online, fucking Garrett? From Tuscaloosa, you 16-year-old fat little fuck. Why don't you put your All face right, on there? Okay. All right. Well, we, 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 we struck a chord with, with Grant. Um, fuck you, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, Garrett really fucked with this man. Um, yeah, but if you're going to say I have low IQ because I'm making a, a just a general statement about what the Jets should do to fix their quarterback room, maybe you say what you think that they should do and see how people react. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching, listening. Rate us five stars. Check us out on TikTok, Twitter, at Waterboy Pod. You can look at both of our Twitter pages uh, on the screen at Waterboy Grant and at Edwards Takes. Make sure to listen to us wherever you go. Spread the word of the Waterboy podcast with your family, friends. And with that, thank you all for listening and watching. Waterboy's out.